Welcome to the Psychology Club podcast, brought to you by Vicente Martinez High School. Hi, thanks for watching Psychology Club. My name is Robert. Today we have Derek with Doopy. Uh, first off, what do you do? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Derek. Am I loud enough? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Derek from Contra Costa County Office of Education, located in Pleasant Hill. I'm what you call a youth development specialist. I mainly train students to teach other students. I also co-facilitate the Youth Health Coalition in the county. And as of recent, I've been eating way more chocolate than I'm supposed to. All right. Okay. Uh, my name is Jasmine. Uh, what, why do you start doing this work? Because I hate people that hate people. That makes sense. Now, uh, after I found out that big tobacco does a horrible job of killing people uh, and the effects that happens on uh, communities and specific groups, I took passion to it. So I've always worked with young people, but when I found out that I can be paid to kick them in the butt, that's what I signed up for. Yes, I am. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm wondering how many people quit smoking and vaping every day or every year. Every year, good, good question. Um, the numbers fluctuate because you have people that um, don't always quit; they kind of taper off. So, I, I, honestly, I couldn't give you a statistic. Um, they have proven methods. Cold turkey, like stopping completely, is proven the most effective technique. And then you have what's called cessation devices, like. Nicotine gum, nicotine patch, those are proven. Vaping has some success, but it's nowhere compared. That's why no vaping product has been proven. Um, for every one person that quits smoking using vaping, 89 pick up the habit, so it doesn't equate. So the number kind of goes up and down. I couldn't tell you like fully, kind of kind of look that up on a state and nation level. I'm Allie, and my question for you is what motivates you every day to continue doing this job? You all can't tell I'm smiling behind my mask. Now, I, to be honest, I love when young people pick up the desire to want to stop something that's targeting them. Like when y'all like go hard in the paint and stuff gets done, all oh, that gets me like, man, I would throw all the incentives at you as possible. So when this school pops off and nobody's touching vaping anymore, I'm like, oh, they did it. I'm coming back with like prizes. I'm gonna be like Oprah. <laughs> but now when y'all pick it up and run with it it does a great that's that's where my passion comes from and then when we have the youth health coalition over the whole county they've actually gone before policymakers put in the right ordinances to protect young people and communities that gets it going so that's my motivation see change let's get it um i'm Alyssa, and i'm wanting to know what's the most dangerous part product on the market mm, good one it changes so much when it comes to vaping. There's something new like every week. And that's why I talk to young people. Right now, I would say the most dangerous are the bigger disposables because they hold more liquid. Flume being the main one, but I just came across, uh, oh my goodness, one called Lucid Air yesterday. What you laughing for? <laughs> um, it's called Lucid Air. It's a disposable. And this thing holds twice as much liquid than a flume. So I don't even know what's in it yet. So the more e-juice that's in there the more addictiveness it is so the disposables that have a lot of liquid are the most dangerous ones to me right now uh my name is ian i have a very special question from mm -hmm. a very special guest Derek. Uh, how much of an increase has there been in children starting vaping during the pandemic uh actually from what we found out statistically during the pandemic use went down because when students were isolated in um social distancing they weren't on campuses, so they didn't have access to it from their peers. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, uh, young people wouldn't leave their house, go walk to the corner store, buy one. They'd come home and mom and dad would catch them. So a lot of young people stopped using during the pandemic, which is like, yay. But what we're seeing now is kids are coming back to school. Num like We don't have numbers yet, but from anecdotal conversations, more use is starting to happen. So hopefully we can keep that trend lower. But during the pandemic, we did discover, and it wasn't like a California numbers we did. We had to look at national numbers, and they said that it was less use. So we were actually celebrating that. Uh, my name is Nathaniel, and my question for you is, what is your favorite part of your job? I drive off the tears of the tobacco company when they get shut down. 
<laughs> that, was that polite enough? No, okay. Um, I actually like coming to schools. This is fun. This is great. Like pandemic sucked so bad. Did I say suck? Yeah, pandemic sucked so much because everybody's on a Zoom. People ain't turning their cameras on. I don't get to giggle at people when they say, "Do you love your mother?" Like that stuff. <laughs> like that stuff is. This is dope for me. I like being in front of young people because y'all vibrate and then y'all bring in that energy to do the advocacy work. So I like coming to schools. I like being on campuses. I like interacting with young people. I like throwing stuff at y'all when y'all do something great. So that's a big part of why I do it and why I like doing it. My name is Layla, and I do also have a question. Can people ever just like quit smoking? Or like, what are like resources that are available to people to do that? So, like I said earlier, like cutting cold turkey is the like the number one way to do it. I'll be honest, it's extremely hard. I think on average, it takes a person seven like actual tries to quit smoking and that's like when they really want to but cutting it off clear clear out with a cold turkey move that's usually the, the main way there are resources out there you have 1-800 numbers you have in the county you can dial 211 you can also text quit numbers and they also have apps to where it can give you a reminder like hey this is how much you use today or uh, inspiration to tell you not to use the kind of thing and then you have cessation like the nicotine pack nicotine gum so there are resources resources for people. If you need some, contact our office. We can always link you in. Um, hi, my name's Perla, and um, I have a question um, as well. And then the question was, how do tobacco and vape companies get away with marketing their products uh, like towards children? Oh, good question. You want a short one or a fast answer? Short answer, long answer? Long answer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, ultimately, Tobacco, far as traditional, like the stuff you smoke, it's been proven to be predatory towards young people. So you all will never see a tobacco commercial on TV or in a movie like a Marlboro ad. It's illegal because it's proven to target young people. When vaping came along a little bit over a decade ago, it's not proven to be deadly yet. So they can advertise the way that tobacco used to. So they can be on ads, on TV, you see them on Netflix, you see comedians with them, holding them when they're doing their bit. Um, they can advertise the way the tobacco used to because it hasn't been proven to cause as many deaths. So they can get away with it because it's quote unquote not as bad is what they say. But we're seeing a lot of correlations between tobacco and vaping. And on the other side of it, I ain't trying to put anyone on blast, but tobacco companies have billions of dollars and they have uh, politicians that they help get in office. And so when a vote comes to, hey, uh, we want to ban flavors, they start pulling on coattails like, hey, remember we gave you $100,000 for your campaign? We're going to need you to kind of vote in our favor on this one. And so the voting and everything kind of goes across because they have people to influence their position. Sadly, that's how our country right? So yeah, they're able to get away with murder, literally. I said it, I said it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>